Today, I'm super excited to welcome Lois Naherney onto our podcast. Lois is the president and CEO of DNA Power. Her company does DNA testing and more specifically genetic testing, which I've had done myself. Uh, today, Lois shares her own personal story and how she got into the company, um, how it really transformed her health. She was experiencing some major health issues and could not figure it out over a number of years. And simply by doing a genetic test, by doing DNA testing, she was able to determine how to change her lifestyle and how to proact on her health. Today, we talk about DNA testing and what's involved. Uh, she shares examples of how, is, how it has helped so many members, including our own Advoca members. Um, I get into my own story because again, I've had my own uh, genetic testing done and how it has helped me transform my own health over the years. And lastly, how our members and how others can access the DNA testing. So sit back and enjoy today's show. Lois, Lois great, great to have you on our podcast today. We're so excited. And uh, more than that, we're excited uh, how you're helping our Advocate Health members on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis uh, lead healthier and happier lives. So, so glad to have you on our podcast today. Thanks so much, Kevin. Delighted to be here. And uh, my whole thing and passion is around helping people live healthier lives. Yeah, perfect. Good. We're on the same page then. Um, where are you joining us from today, Lois? I am in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. It's been a pretty wet winter, but um, it's, it's, it's great to be here. And we look forward to having you out here to visit us again soon. Yeah, yeah well, uh, if it's wet in Vancouver, it means it's snowing up in the mountains and, uh, and we get out to Whistler quite a bit. So uh, the rain that, that you maybe don't like, we love because it's snow up, up top. So the skiing's <laughs> been fantastic. Yeah, for sure. So Lois, for our listeners, uh, just to, to uh, start things off, would you mind just sharing some of your background uh, in terms of, you know, if you don't mind where you grew up, what area, uh, just any of your background you'd care to share would be great. Yeah, fantastic. Well, my background really is as a corporate executive, and that's really, um, you know, where I spent 25 years of my career. I am a Kelowna girl. That's where I grew up. And uh, lived um, in Ottawa, New Zealand, England, around the world. I've worked with quite a lot of different uh, large corporations. Uh, so I was in Vancouver with um, Fletcher Challenge, Crystal Decisions that became SAP. I was in the tech world. Uh, I um, uh, was uh, a corporate executive with TK Shipping. And uh, that was the point where I, in my 40s, started to lose my health. And that's where I started to make some shifts and ended up discovering and a little bit by accident uh, through a cheek swab that um, and, and DNA that I had some genetic variations. And after being really sick, it changed my life. So um, I got into made a big 180 and uh, I'm a biotech entrepreneur. I ended up buying the company and I have uh, dedicated my life now trying to help people be healthier every day. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And do you mind sharing what that initial genetic, because I know ge genetic testing and we're going to get into it, but I know it's come a long way over the years, but do you mind sharing, were you deficient in a certain thing or were you predisposed to, to a certain condition or if you don't mind sharing, that would be Yeah, great. absolutely. I'm very open with my story on this. So again, you know, appeared to be healthy on the surface, had always been fairly fit, ate reasonably well. Um, but I started to get tired. I had chronic fatigue. I had restless leg syndrome where your legs vibrate at night and it affects your sleep. Um, probably alarmingly, I had shortness of breath. I couldn't pull a full breath into my lungs. I had uh, really terrible periods that led to severe anemia. And it, it culminated in me having no iron left in my body and being admitted to hospital uh, for with with no notice, two days of blood transfusions. My kids, my my twins were at home with a sitter. My husband out of town, and suddenly here I was, corporate executive, traveling around the world, and I'm now hospitalized uh, because I I'm, my whole body's collapsing and my oh. organs are starting to fail. And uh, Lois, was was it something that happened? Uh, those conditions that you felt, did it just come on suddenly, or when you look back, was it kind of over time? things were, were progressing. It was over time. And you know, the busier we are, Kevin, the more we try and ignore it or believe it'll go away and, and just put it to the side. 
And uh, it was it was four years of that to culminate. So I started going to see doctors. So I, I said, I've got the shortness of breath, this fatigue that doesn't make sense. And to be fair, the medical system usually looks at one thing at a time. And so I was sent to a respirologist and to an asthma specialist. And uh, we tried to see if there was anything wrong with my lungs. There was nothing wrong with my lungs. I was sent to a gynecologist. There was nothing that they could determine that was wrong there. I was sent to an oncologist to, to, to see, did I maybe have a cancer that was causing all of these other symptoms that we, we couldn't figure out? So I kind of went to doctor to doctor and you know, every few months you'd have to wait to see a new specialist, get in, go again. And it was taking, you know, over years, we didn't, there was nothing, we found nothing. And I ended up, um, I got fascinated in genetics because I adopted identical twins uh, 20 years ago. And I have these, uh, these beautiful twins adopted from Vietnam, uh, one um, who is now transgender and at age three asked me why she wasn't a boy. And so I became fascinated in well, what is genetics and how would, how would these children be so different if, if they are, you know, if they're identical. So I've been studying okay. genetics for essentially 20 years and someone uh, recommended to me doing a DNA test to learn more about the diet and the lifestyle for my twins. Made total sense to me. So I signed up for, for my twins and myself, got their results, learned wonderful things about them, but got my results back and went, oh my goodness, I have my genetic issues are in vitamin Bs and methylation. Huh. And what had happened is my body was essentially had no uh, bees in it, which didn't, you need the bees to activate the iron to activate the oxygen. And so I was getting iron shots, but that didn't do anything. B12 didn't do anything. It turns out my problem is actually B9 folate, which in hindsight is I think why I couldn't get pregnant. So I went through years of fertility treatments. It turns out folate and bees are, are very tricky for my body to, to take in because I have the methylation issues. And as soon as I started, realized that and started taking B vitamins, I had no problems. It was two weeks later, four years of this fatigue, lack sleep issues, breathing problems went away. And so for me, vitamin uh, deficiency is one of the issues I struggle with genetically. I take vitamin Bs every day, plus a good regime of vitamins to manage antioxidants and a few other things and support my methylation, support the strength of my mitochondria. And I am perfectly healthy. Here I am. This is, uh, you know, 10, 15 later, years later, I am happier, healthier in living a better life than I ever have, uh, Kevin. And it was all because of this little piece of information that was so simple. And because I, I when I got that information as a corporate executive, I went, how could this have been so simple, four years of being ill, no solutions, uh, and so many years of, of going to try and find health, and no one suggested nutrition deficiency as a base cause. Yeah. So that's yeah. when I bought the company. <laughs> well, that's awesome. what a great story and, and great outcome. I mean, it's so great that, that, that A, that you, you were able to determine what caused your health issues but, and get them fixed, and then the, the even a better part is now you, through the purchase of that company, you're spreading the word to, to others as well. <clears throat> because I think so many people are in that situation where, you know, we hear it every day with our, with our members is that they have a health issue, but they don't necessarily know what it is. Um, and of, often they're leaning on our team, our, our nurse navigation team to help them, you know, get the best treatment, quick treatment, get access to specialist testing. Um, and I know personally, because I've done genetic testing myself, uh, the value of it, right? And uh, but but so many people aren't even aware of it. And uh, I there's a term I use um, when I when I talk about our uh, our program, and it's called know your score, right? Mm -hmm. And know your score. It's pretty simple. It's it's know where you stand. Like a lot of us don't know where we stand, and, and just as simple as blood tests. But not, but you know to take it one step further, genetic testing. You know where do you stand and and what because we all have deficiencies or let's say absorption issues or certain things um, that again open my eyes and uh, but we're unaware of it and and then we and then we're we're looking for some way to solve it but we're going down the wrong path right well exactly because the symptoms in the body can manifest in very different ways the, the the question is can you get to the root cause and I think that's the challenge is that we don't have a lot of tools to get to the root cause and as you you're pointing out what data do we actually have about our bodies? Really, the, the, the medical system can use, you know, some levels of testing, um, you know, whether it be MRIs or, or x-rays or what have you for physical tests, 
But then really there's just blood tests, there's urine tests and maybe a stool test. But those are all a point in time and they will represent a certain amount of health. And we should have that data and we should be monitoring, we should know our baselines. But what I love about the DNA testing is it's now so accessible, it's affordable, and it is it never changes. So you yeah. do it once, and now you actually have a roadmap for your body. You now know what the blueprint looks like. You've got this roadmap that says, ah, Kevin, here are the things that were your genetics were not set up I, you know, ideally, and you could be more predisposed to issues. So it's a roadmap, and those are your potholes. Drive around your potholes. Like, you know, if you're going to take your body and slam it into the areas that you're weakest, you're going to get sick. And so what I love about the DNA roadmap is it says, here's the areas and our testing, we use a green and red. So where it's red, just avoid the red stuff, reduce things, protect yourself, focus on something else, and you're going to set your body up to be healthier. And again, it's just, it's great because you do it once. Yeah. And yeah. And you know what, that's what we say to people. And I, when I look back to when I did my first genetic test, I'm going to say it was probably like $4,000. Like it was super expensive, right? And then it went down to $2,000 and $1,000. And we'll get into it, uh, what you're charging through uh, to our Advoca members. In a, but it's very affordable. Um, and as you say, you, it's genetically uh, based. So you don't need to do it every year. You do it once because those are your genetics. They aren't, they aren't changing. That's the hand we're dealt with, right? Well, and you know, you learn your genetics, but what is important to know is your DNA is not your destiny. It doesn't matter what DNA result you get for the most part, there's only a very few genetic areas that are fairly determinate. The rest are variable. They are only predispositions. Epigenetics, which is lifestyle, it means on top of genetics is really what's most important. And I think that's what you and I have figured out through our life experiences that if you shift a few of the lifestyle factors, of course, diet uh, being a key one, but exercise, stress, sleep, toxins in your environment and mental wellness, those things affect how your DNA expresses itself. And so if you have some weak genes and you, you kind of protect through lifestyle around it, they, they just don't show up. So it actually doesn't even you know, matter if you've got some of these really negative ones, if you're doing the right things, they, they, you can keep them from manifesting anytime in your lifetime so that you really live a long, healthy life. Yeah, so it's interesting you say that. And my the last uh, genetic test, and one of the things that came through, and, and I can talk about some others, um, was that I'm predisposed to cardiovascular disease, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people would say, well, why do you even want to know that? And uh, uh, my response is, well, why wouldn't you want to know about that? Because if I'm predisposed that way, then I what are some lifestyle things that I need to do to counteract that? And uh, my dad died quite suddenly, I'll say very suddenly of a heart attack at age 72, middle of the night, supposedly a fit person, healthy, you know, was a farmer in his younger days, big, solid, and all of a sudden dies supposedly with no symptoms in the middle of the night. Well, through genetic testing, I've learned that, you know, obviously I have the gene and probably my, my siblings do as well uh, for uh, cardiovascular disease. So then, you know, uh, I'm not sure if you've read my book, but I've, you know, a number of years ago, I took on, to, I've always been physically fit, fit and active, um, but I was avoiding uh, sleep or sorry, nutrition. I, I, I thought nutrition didn't really matter. As long as I worked out every day, I'd be fine. Uh, didn't really pay attention to sleep or didn't really pay attention to my stress levels, my, uh, my uh, mindfulness. And those are all key areas of, of my life now that I try to pay attention to on a daily basis. But What's, it, what's interesting is when I just went for my most recent uh, testing at one of our functional uh, medicine partners, fun functional medicine clinics, which is anti-aging, um, I'm still obviously predisposed to cardiovascular disease, but my epigenetic age, and they measure your arterial health and your telomeres and like all these different measures come together. But um, I was uh, 16 years younger epigenetically than my chronological age, right? So you know, so to your point, you can do things about it, right? There's things it's so it's not a, uh, I'll say a life sentence or a death sentence. It's, it's to know it's having the ammunition. So as you say, how do I work around this? So it's not an issue. It's, it's exactly the opposite from a sentence. It is giving you the ability to take power over your health. You know, we're not, we're all, you know, good at different things, but so, and there's even different ways our health shows up. It's based off of some of our ancestry and, you know, what foods we were exposed to or where these mutations or variations came in. 
whatever is there got you to this place, your ancestors. So there's something to be thankful for. Um, but it's just knowing it, like the fact that you know that you can, you can, you've shifted your diet, you've shifted your lifestyle. And I love that we can now know as well through some of this alternative testing that you're younger in age and you and and those of us who, who, are, who are doing this can feel it like I can I know I feel younger than I am and um and you know we wish that for everybody like you can do that too but you need to own your health I love that what you do because the system is very difficult to navigate I, I mean that's why I love Advoca because what you're trying to do is help people navigate the system and the system is tough when you've got health issues to get to the root and I love that you know you've partnered with us because we're one of those tools and uh, that can help people get insight into where should you go check next? Do you have some genes that might put your risk for cardiovascular, Alzheimer's, foods, diet? Like we can, it can get points you in which direction you could work in, which makes it simpler to solve. Yeah, hundred percent. So again, it's uh, yeah, I like it because it's it's if you have health issues, your test is super valuable. But even if you don't, it's it's giving you a roadmap for what could strike you down the road. So, you know, another one that came up that I never knew about in my genetic test is I have the gene for celiac disease. Mm -hmm. Am I celiac? No. Right. Do, you know, do, do I even think I have gut issues? No. Um, but I have the gene for that. So the reality is because I have the gene for that, obviously I have to adjust my diet and avoid gluten and avoid other things. So it doesn't get activated, call it. Exactly. Like that's what's so cool is that you can take a look at Okay, carbs, fats, and proteins. Like I look at, we'll get so many people who have come to us and tried every diet to either lose weight or have some health issues. Like, you know, keto is a pretty big uh, fat area right now. And keto is fantastic for some people. Most people lose weight on it in the first few months. But I've also seen people almost kill themselves being on a keto diet because they don't have the fat genes to be able to support the breakdown of that over time. And so when you can get a window into Okay, what are your macronutrients, a window into your micronutrients, and then a window into things like gluten, lactose, um, you know, caffeine, etc. You've got insights to know, like we've got, you know, I had a, a person who was a runner and had been at phys, you know, he's, you know, our age and had been in physio for like two years because of his knee pain. And we were able to show him on his results, you know, you've got, you no, know, you've got lactose genes and some inflammation genes, just try going no lactose diet. And for, and he did that for one month, no problem, no e e knee issues, stopped all of his physios and was able to get back to running. It was that simple, but because he was raised on a farm, grew up with milk, wasn't allergic to milk, didn't realize that that could cause inflammation for him. So it had been part of his diet, but it can be just a little insidious. It's just that kind of that drip effect over time. Like for me, I'm kind of a 50-50 split on the lactose gene, but in, I started putting on a pound a year when I realized that that might be one of my contributors, pulled it down in my diet, not completely out and dropped that 10 pounds. The bees and the lactose dropped the 10 pounds that I'd put on. Yeah, we've, you know, what we've had uh, clients and a client in particular uh, shared a story about their son that had been on uh, medications for eczema and psoriasis their whole life and figured that, and the docs basically said, you'll be on this their whole life. And through the through genetic testing, found out that they were lactose intolerant. They had the gene for that. Removed that from their diet, and literally within one month, was off all their meds. Like think of that. They exactly. basically thought they'd be on those meds for the rest of their life, and it was just they their the lactose was calling or was causing inflammation in their system. Right? Exactly. So. And so what's really clear is that you get your results. In our case, it's green and red. If it's red. These are your watch out areas. These are now, it gives you a narrowed down list of places to explore of things to try out. As opposed to if you go for allergy testing, once your system is activated, you test for everything. Like everything is a problem. And now you, you know, go to onto a complete elimination diet. Well, this narrows it down. Where should you be eliminating? And I will say as well, though, because it's, it is more like I love what we do because I think we're the simplest single solution to get insight into your health of anything that you can, you can do. But in addition, we can also point out when it's not a problem. And so we can see that it isn't this. You might have over, you know, so many kids um, end up on, on antibiotics and it clears out their gut system and they can't rebuild that. And that creates this issue of the porousness through the lining, which now creates this hypersensitivity and reaction in the allergies. If, the, if we can see it's not in your genetics, it may be that you have to rebuild the lining of the gut or rebuild or repopulate. There can be other solutions. And so what I like is that, 
you can narrow down where should I be looking? Could there be another cause that's creating it? And then is there things I can do to work with that? Our body wants to be healthy. It wants to be in homeostasis. You just have to find out what that balance point is for you. We should be able to live healthy. My goal is 120. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm working on healthy to 120. That's good. I got you beat. Mine's 136. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I'm talking to more people these days. That's gonna that's making me think I got to up that number because uh, okay, it's come possible. On. Come on, Lois, you got to up it. Come on. <laughs> um, so question for, I know we're talking about diet and um, in my book, I actually talk about the wheels of health. And it's interesting when you talk about your four areas that you help people in, but one of them is obviously diet and I'll call it eating well. And I share what worked for me, right? Which starts out with a shake every day. But just because that worked for me, it doesn't work for everyone, right? And I, you know, what I what I like about what you're doing in genetic testing is you're it's it's personalizing medicine, right? Because people will read a book like the Wheat Belly, right? Or they'll read us or you know, eat for your blood type or whatever, and everybody will think, oh, that and one it'll work great for somebody. But they're and then they say, oh, you got to read this book. But then their their friend tries it and it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because genetically they it, it, they're genetically different, right? They're those two people, right? So there um, is no one size fits all diet. We are we are an n equals one. We are an, we are a single unit, unique, unique, genetically unique in every way. And it's finding out our unique pattern. Yeah, exactly. So while, um, while we're on the wheels of health, I'd just like to dive a bit deeper on that. So we've talked a bit about uh, diet and, and eating well. Um, one of my other uh, wheels of health is obviously movement and to move every day and, and exercise. And I'm a big proponent of just moving every day, whether it's weights, whether it's cardiovascular. Um, so can you talk about how your genetic testing can uh, point people, I'll say, in the right direction to do the right type of movement or exercises. Yeah, well, we actually work with a lot of um, with uh, athletes and professional athletes trying to get that edge both through diet, but also in their exercise. So it actually started a little bit with people who were doing bodybuilding and we could help them get to their ideal um, fitness level healthier. Um, but what we can do is we can see in your genetics, if you are more of an endurance or a power athlete, and it's so funny because when you, when you work with trainers, often they like power and I'm totally an endurance gal. Like it's, and so I go to the gym and I'm just like, oh my God, I don't want to push to fatigue. It just doesn't work for me. And it turns out I, I need more muscle. Like we look at muscle fatigue. We look at muscle uh, repair time. We look at which your preferences are. I need longer sets, lighter weights. As soon as I, I'm happy to go, you know, hike for three hours, but make me sprint around a block, like I'll just like fall over and, and no interest, I'll drop out of the program. So I had to be really careful with, with my trainers, my fitness trainers, to, to not be on their program, but to try and coach them onto mine. And I've actually, you know, I do more of my own now just because I really understand what my body needs. So I'll do, I do a lot more, um, you know, in terms of my own program, I know I need the endurance, I need to do longer sets, lighter weights. Um, I also know that I've got, um, I need a little bit of support. You can, there's a, uh, some genes that look at, do you need food and nutrition before you work out? So some people will find that they just like, woof, they, they work out and they're exhausted. There are certain people that should have um, some protein or nutrition or other thing before they work out and then need it after because it's the way their body works and, and uh, deals with it. We can look at, you know, VO2 max, like how much oxygen, but we, and we also then look at things like um, cardiovascular. And so, you know, I've had some uh, athletes come in who are off to do the, the Grand Fondo. Their, their father had died of a heart attack hadn't been in to check things. And I could see exactly where they needed to, to where they needed to go get checked, look at some of their cholesterol levels before going, before making a decision to go all out as a, you know, a weekend warrior. And, uh, you know, there's some people I know, we, you know, you change lives and you save lives when you find something that's that dramatic as you experienced as, as well, Kevin. So, yeah, yeah. no, that's, yeah. yeah, no, your point's such a good one. And it, it's interesting because when I did my uh, genetic testing again, it came back and said that, actually the doc said no wonder you like doing the sports you like doing because all I do is endurance right it's basically been marathons or now for the last number of years triathlons and for fun I'll run up Whistler and people will think well, you find that fun I go oh yeah it's like the best like I run for three or four hours you know and it sounds like you're built the same way but when he looked at my genetics he said 
you're, you're in the right sports, like you're doing the right things. And that's why you feel good doing it, right? Because you, because you're genetically, your body's built for that. Exactly. Right? Versus and, strength or power or those types of things. You right. Know? And so, you know, occasionally we'll work with somebody like a bodybuilder and I can see that they aren't set up to build muscle as easily and they'll, and, but you can still work around. It doesn't mean you can't do any of these sports. It just means there are certain things you have to work a little harder at to be able to, 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 to do that particular one. And you know what, that's okay. Um, so we can see people even with not the perfect genetics ending up being very successful in their sports. Yeah. And you know what? I, I'm with you that I'd much rather, you know, this morning was even raining. I went out for a nice run. I'd much rather do that than hop in the weight room. So, but I still realize I still need to do weights, right? So, yeah. 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 So let's, uh, so the, another wheel of health is sleep. So, and you know, when we do, when I, I write a health blog as well as I'm sure you know, and, and um, you know, when I write anything to do with sleep, it's by far and away our most read blogs, like, which just shows me, you know, the population at large, uh, especially adult population has trouble sleeping. So can you just comment on how genetic testing might help people, let's say, solve their health, their sleep issues? Mm -hmm. um, what you can do is as soon as you find out where your body has deficiencies, if those are, are off balance, that will start to affect your equilibrium and your hormones and other things that can affect sleep. So we'll look at things like your detox, your hormones, your vitamins, and that can give insight. It won't give an answer, but we'll, it'll give insight into whether that might be affecting some of your, your sleep in part because your cells are needing some, some nutrition. So if I go with, uh, you know, I was one of those people who burned the candle at both ends. As a result, you burn your bees and just want to say that if you're feeling fatigued, as soon as, you know, any time over your forties, especially women over 50, the odds are you're low in bees. Cause we just, we just produce less at this age. So I really highly, uh, you know, just generalize without any testing. If you're feeling tired and you're over 40 or 50, take a complex vitamin B methylated to help yourself out. Cause that can, that can affect it. So as soon as my bees, if they dip, then I will feel it through restless leg syndrome at night. So two hours after I fall asleep, suddenly my limb will become vibrate a bit and I'll go, oh, you're, you're deficient. You need to work on your, for me, bees and magnesium. I'll, I'll pump both of those up over the next few days. Um, I know you do this as well, but I'm a huge advocate, especially flu season. I go out, I love getting IV uh, nutrition vitamin drips. To me, that I, I'd prescribe that for everybody once a month versus almost anything else they can take because it's just such a great way to get some nutrition in. Um, and sleep is just important. And so again, if your health is out of balance, if some of these nutrients are out of balance, it just affects the ability to sleep. We do need eight hours. Of, it's different for all people, to be fair. Um, uh, but getting the sleep really helps repair especially for people who have some of the Alzheimer's and other um, plaquing genes, because your body needs time to clear. And it's the nighttime that does that. I'll add one more uh, tip, which you probably do, and that's intermittent fasting. If you can um, make sure you're stopping your eating by between 6 and 8 p.m. at night, then your body is not focused on digestion and it allows you to fall into a deeper sleep. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I practice that as, as well. And it sounds like you and I must have some of the same genes. Um, but for our listeners, we'll put in the, in the show notes, you probably know the work of Walter Longo on uh, intermittent fasting, and he's one of the, the pros in it and in the field. So um, for and a great, great book. So um, we'll put that in the show notes. So thanks for bringing that up. But back, you know, you told your story about vitamin B. I mean, I, I don't absorb vitamin B, right? And I get my blood tested regularly. Um, so I have to not only supplement on a daily basis, but I also do an injection once every two weeks as well to make sure, you know, that I'm, but that's all from my, as a result of my genetic testing, right? I didn't know that before. Right? Well, exactly. Now, and to be fair, should we have to do this? Like people will say to me, really, can't I get it all from food? I think we used to be able to get it all from food. And the problem is nutrition, you are what you eat. I mean, really, if we don't think that's the case, you know, go, go study again, just how, how, you know, we are just so integrated. You are what you eat. So you need to eat healthy food. But the difference is that our food supply is just so different now. We do have genetically modified products. It doesn't absorb in our gut as well. Um, food looks bigger, nicer, prettier, but it is, does not have the level of nutrition. Different studies show that food has 20 to 80% less of the nutrition in it. It's had previously our water isn't as alive as it used to be. Our soils aren't as live. So yes, if you're eating organically, holistically on a farm with no toxins, maybe you don't need to supplement as much, 
but in the lifestyle that we're in with our exposure to stress, electronics, um, EMFs, uh, depleted soils, less water that's not as healthy, supplementation is now critical. It just is. And so I was someone who never took any supplements when I got sick at all. I didn't believe in it. And, and I mean, here I am, I'm completely 180, changed my life completely. Yeah, that's awesome. What a, I love your story. And you know what, you're helping so many people. So um, can you just explain what a D DNA test for our listeners? They might go, well, how do you even get a DNA test? And well, what's involved? It, 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 this is all just, we do it all remotely. We've worked with your nurse navigators as well. So they know how all of this works. We, we went through their, their tests and results. And it's as simple as you just get mailed a kit. It's a swab. You rub it on the inside of your cheek, put it back in, register it online. And we, uh, your results are uploaded. We test, we're very targeted. So Kevin, our work, we target the 200 plus genes most related to day-to-day -day health. So we're, because if you are healthy day-to-day, -day, it doesn't trigger the disease genes. And so our focus is always researching what are the genes you can do something about and work with and support. So we target 70 areas then around uh, diet, fitness, body functions like detoxification, hormones, methylation, and inflammation, and mental wellness, just things that just help you, uh, that can affect how your brain is, is functioning. And so they're all things that are very accessible. They're things that you can do. You get a recommendation. Here's, you know, based on your unique roadmap, here are the things that you should be doing. And so it's, it's really very simple. And um, in addition, because we found that people, um, we haven't grown up knowing to own our health and own the results. We always include with our full test um, time with a, a, a holistic DNA trained nutritionist so that you can get walked through what do you do? What do your results say? Where do you want to go to maybe try and adjust your um, diet and your lifestyle to really take the most important three to five to 10 steps that you can? So for most people, we come up with really about five things. If you did this for your lifetime, it will keep your body on track to stay healthy. And yeah, so that's, that's, that's awesome. how we do it. Yeah, that's awesome. And you're right. Our nurse navigation team, they, they uh, thanks for offering that, but they did do the testing and we got amazing feedback, right? Mm -hmm. And, and a, a found out some things that they weren't aware of because most people aren't aware and then B, what you can do about it. Right. So well, exactly. You know. So what you do is if you get your DNA test, it informs the nurse navigators on where. So if you're struggling now with allergies or with chronic fatigue or with pain or inflammation or gut issues, that result helps them try to refer you into the next best step to try to solve that problem. Yeah. And so it's just, it, again, it just makes it so that you're not kind of having to shotgun. You're trying to say, okay, ah, we see you have got that celiac uh, gene issue. Let's go maybe test further in that area. Maybe that's the reason of the inflammation and the gut issues. Or it could be maybe lactose is the issue. Perhaps it's the way you're managing your diet. Um, there could be some cardiovascular things. There could be cholesterol things, but we can see it in the DNA that that is perhaps your next best step for helping to get to the root of some of your problems. Yeah. And you know what, just a, a very practical example or part of the DNA testing show for me, for instance, showed that I, I process um, caffeine moderately. So I'm not, and there's some people, we all know people that, you know, they'll have a cup of coffee at 11 o'clock at night and then sleep like a baby. And we know other people that if they have a cup after noon, then they can't, they can't sleep. Right. So, and that's all it's genetically based. It's how is it? And it doesn't change. Right. It's well, like, you know, the coffee one was a really big one for me, Kevin. So I would go to my, my executive meetings. Again, I had, I was raising twins. I'm traveling around the world. I was having these health issues. I'm sleeping four hours a night. So I'd get to the meeting at eight o'clock, my executive meeting in the morning, and I would start drinking coffee. And by noon, I was, I was just like wound tight as a band. I, my heart was racing. I was so stressed and I thought I was stressed. Turns out my body can't break down the coffee doesn't metabolize it. Yeah. it doesn't yeah, metabolize yeah. so i can have one cup no problem the second i have another cup within two hours i'm now like i felt like a second cup this morning i went oh no no i already talked too fast 
if I had a second cup, I can just, you know, I can talk a million miles. No, no, that's good. No, you're, uh, and, and not only that, you know, I'm a big proponent as I'm sure you are. And a lot of our members of, you know, organic. And I mean, there's a lot of toxins and mold, especially in coffee that people don't realize. So you need to know where you're getting the source from and everything else. So, you know, just as simple as that discussion, there's so much that goes into it. We could do a whole podcast just on coffee. <laughs> exactly. So, um, and it's hard to do, I will add, it's hard to do everything right. So just find a few things to do right. And you just do a bit of it, at a, a bit of it at a time. And that moves you in the direction for health. And um, just for our listeners, again, you mentioned that it narrows down. Here's your key areas. In other words, like you've got green, yellow, red, um, right? So can you just explain that and what that looks like just so they can simply. Yeah, uh, well, we do everything like a roadmap. So being a biz gal, I, I, you know, I just wanted to put anything, everything into a roadmap. And so it, so that you could just scan it and see what you need. And so not everybody can see this if it's listening to the podcast, but you can see green and red where it's 50% red or more. That's where you focus your time. It generates a recommendation for you. So then you've got a recommendation page that'll say, um, okay, uh, consider lactose is a, is a problem for you. Consider reducing or avoiding milk and dairy products and using dairy alternatives uh, made from cashew, almonds, and other. So this variation can contribute to weight gain and inflammation over time. So you're getting a direct recommendation plus real detailed stuff uh, further in that can just say, you know, hey, here's, where, here's what you should be doing specifically for you. Yeah, great. No, you sound like you narrowed it down because I, I know, again, first genetic test I ever had done, I'm sure it was like $4,000. Um, but the report was very co complex. In other words, you, you needed to be for sure an MD to read this thing. <laughs> like it was like, you know, it's, it was, uh, or, or a science major or something, but it, it wasn't well, simple, that's for sure. And that was our whole goal because it can be very complicated. So what we find is that we were the most comprehensive test that we've tried to break it down in the simplest way. As we said, our focus is that you can figure out what you need to do. And so we have 250 pages of details, but you're going to get just a, you know, a 17 page summary report with the red green graphs. I say, if, you know, you don't even have to look at that, just glance to see what it is. If you want, just print out the recommendations pages, start shopping to that for your food. And that's going to create it, make a difference for you. So it really is that difference. And it's not $4,000 anymore because we're very targeted in what we look after and we, we're trying to make it accessible. It's, uh, we, have a, we have very specialized pricing for Advoca because you don't take anything. It's 100%. The, any benefit goes to the client. It's $399. Uh, that's lower than we offer it uh, publicly. So we have a special price. And it includes this 45 minute consult with a nutritionist who can help then to guide you what you might want to pursue with the nurse navigator as well to, you know, to point in that direction. So you're getting a lot of value in that, you know, it, not 4,000, it's 400, right? And, yeah, yeah. and it, you only do it once and you can know for yourself and you can know for your kids. And I like to have a family do it because then the family can say, how do you want to gear your, your, your cooking and your eating in the family? to be healthier, because then you can all kind of work on that together. Yeah, so that's great. I mean, the price has come down considerably. And also, thank you for giving all of our members a specialized price at, at that level, because it's very affordable. And as you know, I mean, at the end of the day, we're what we're looking for for our members is always the very best health solutions and outcomes. And we only partner with organizations that are willing to do that. So again, thank you for that. And I know our members are experiencing on a daily basis here, uh, the great work and the great testing that you do. So Lois, thank you for that. I want to add two points. One is if people have done 23andMe uh, testing, you can just send us your results. We'll discount off of that price as well. And you can use those. We get about 80% of the information. It's missing a few things that we like to talk, uh, look at, but you can get the majority of it um, by using your 23andMe information for um, quite a lot uh, less money because we don't have to do the genetic testing. The second thing I want to add for those who are concerned about privacy, we make that one of our hallmarks is that we never, we never, you know, buy, sell, do anything with your data. We double because I came from tech, everything's double encrypted. It's all kept very safe. Nobody would ever be able to do anything with your data and it is never bought or sold. So for some people, that's a concern. And, and oh, that's you know what, that actually, because I speak about a lot of this type of testing to CEOs and president groups across, uh, and that comes up all the time is... Yeah. 
you know, uh, is the data shared? Is it, and uh, and again, one of the reasons we chose you as a partner is you don't share any of that data. So uh, exactly. thanks for, for clarifying that. So you shared, uh, Lois, you shared your own story. Can you maybe think of a story of um, somebody that you know, a customer that's done their DNA testing, whether it's advocate or not advocate, that they've, uh, they've transformed, let's say, their health? Right. Well, I mean, I've always got stories because every week I'll, I will be involved in, we've got a whole team of nutritionists that do this, but I'll usually go in and do some of the consults as well, just because I love it. Um, so um, we have, you know, early, probably earlier on, we all, I had two women come in, test opposite in terms of um, fat and uh, carbohydrate genes, but one had been raised on fats, bad, low fat diet. The other raised on carbs, bad, low carb diet, and their genes were exactly opposite. Both had put on about 20 pounds. And it was just funny because they were in the same town and knew each other. They switched diets essentially. And both over the subsequent few months were kind of losing that five to 10 pounds a month and ended up each losing this 30 pounds and getting to the weight that they were looking for. So from a weight perspective, you can, you can target in. I, I like using my kids too, because my kids are adopted. So I don't have information because they're um, Asian. Not surprisingly, they don't have lactose genes or um, alcohol genes, but because they're 20, they like to do what they want to do <laughs> and, and not listen to mom. And so they'll be, oh, mom, I know I didn't, you know, I ate, I had lots of lactose again, and now I'm feeling it. So they know it, but they still test it out. And uh, the one, you know, of course, they don't have the alcohol gene, so they have got, they'll, they'll go out and drink and just be like they're they're done. So they know they have to be super super careful uh, in that. And so they know what their plan is. They go against it. You get away with your genetics. I will say, in your first twenty to forty years, forty on, not so much. The roadmap kind of your body goes in the direction of your roadmap. So um, they know and they they try, but. Uh, you know, those, those are just a couple. Yeah, of they know they know because they got the report. But yeah, our human nature is oh, I'm going to keep testing it and just see if it, it's still the case, right? So yeah, yeah I yeah. will say the one that we test for that's probably I find the most significant is the APOE4 gene, which is cholesterol and Alzheimer's related, and it scares people, and yet it shouldn't. We re, we believe it's like uh, uh, diabetes three, and that it's completely 100% manageable, never needs to become an impact in your lifetime. And if you know about it, you know immediately that you should not be on fried foods. You need your sleep to be able to clear placking at night. You need exercise because it mediates it uh, really well. And what it does is it absolutely gives you the incentive and the, uh, in the, the information to shift your lifestyle so that you don't ever let that become a problem. Yeah, it does know, not I, need to become a problem. Yeah, I mean, your point's a really good one. I mean, because people think that if they're ge genetically predisposed, as we talked about earlier, that they're going to get that. And I'll use the, all. Yeah. you know, do you have the gene for that could, uh, you could end up with Alzheimer's down the road. And just because you have that gene, it's like me with a celiac gene, doesn't mean you're going to end up with it because there's many things you can do, as you just said, lifestyle, diet, uh, brain, uh, brain work, supplementation. There's so many things that you can do to, to offset that, I'll say, genetic uh, predisposition. Exactly. And so in my view is, wouldn't you want to know? We know there's no one size fit diet, one size fits all diet, no one size fits all fitness regime. And we know that as we, we think metabolize metabolism slows as we get older, it's actually because we're not working with our genes. You can keep your metabolism up, your health up, your longevity up. Um, and, and your wellness up. It's just a matter of actually having a bit of a roadmap. <clears throat> well, that's good news because I'm competing in the World Triathlon Championships in seven weeks. So I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. And so good luck to you on that. Thank you. So Lois, um, I know for our members out there, obviously they can access uh, your services through our program because you're a partner of ours. So for all of our members that are listening to this podcast, they can reach out to the Net Health Navigation, our nurse navigation team in order to get all the discounted rate uh, for, for our members. Um, but what else, What's if anybody has any questions and we'll put it in the show notes as well, what's the best way for people to reach out or find out about your company? Uh, we're at dnapower.com. We, rec we recommend our total power package and um, we do have a promotion for those who are listening. So for a period, we will offer it to uh, some of your listeners uh, that may not be members of Advoca, where they can use the promo code Advoca. 
um, and they will get a hundred dollars off of our test. So Excellent. that takes awesome. it to the three ninety nine. So uh, we will make that available to people. Um, and so you know, come onto the site. We're always happy to ask questions. It's it's safe, fun, and it's just great information to know. We want awesome. you to live your healthy healthiest life and and take power over your health. Well, I just want to thank you for, uh, on behalf of our members, but just thank you for what you're doing. I mean, through your company, DNA Power, you're helping people be healthier each and every day and live longer, healthier, uh, increase their lifespan, increase their health span. Uh, so thank you for all you're doing to uh, make the world a better place for people. Terrific. And thank you, Kevin, for the work that you're doing. Again, we just want everyone to live a healthy life. Awesome. Okay, Lois, thanks so thank much. You. And we'll be in touch. Take you care. Bet. Thanks, Kevin. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning into our podcast today. For all of our listeners, I invite you to visit AdvocateHealth.com where you can easily become an Advocate member to take advantage of some of the amazing services we offer. You can also access our latest blogs and listen to some of the best medical advice available on our podcast. Don't forget to grab a copy of my latest book, It's Never Too Late to Be Healthy, that is available to order through our website. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.